Good morning, good day. Here we are in front of the Kotzeol stand made in Germany in 4.0. A very, very special guest this morning. Um, good morning, Frau Naumann. Uh, ben Wilson's my name from the uh, Facebook uh, team. It'd be great to hear a few thoughts of, first of all, who you are, what you do here at Ambiente, and where are we standing right now? Well, in a nutshell, I'm the chef of Ambiente. Oh. I'm vice president of Messe Frankfurt, and Ambiente is my main responsibility. So everything around this trade show, from concept, from taking care of exhibitors, from all the planning of the halls, all the marketing is done in, within our team. So you're saying the, the, the godmother of the Ambiente? Well, godmother sounds a little bit... It's the biggest, most, like, the most amazing fairy. Um, so where are we standing right now? You've, you've brought us here this morning to have a look at this new range from Courtsior. Can you tell us, tell us a few things about what you uh, find so interesting about this new organic range? What we see in Ambiente, as it reflects general consumer trends, um, is a more and more growing conscious for um, the question of sustainability. How do we produce things? What materials do we use? Um, what does it mean? What does it mean for patterns of consumption? Kutsiol mm -hmm. traditionally is one of the most important manufacturers of plastic simply. Um, in Germany, but he exports 80% uh, of his production worldwide. So this is really one of the leading companies in uh, more trendy household goods mm -hmm. and uh, home decoration. What they bring new to this show is a new type of, I don't know whether you would call, uh, still call it plastic. It has all the positive um, things of plastic, it's hygienic, it's stable, it's easy to handle, it's light, but it is an organic material. It's without melamine, it's without formaldehyde, it's without BPA. And very simple, um, if you are not very, very idealistic and everything you use and consume is 100% organic, harvested in moonshine, and you use as little as possible fact is that we will solve our garbage problems and our energy problems also within industrial protection. We have to think about material, we have to think about energy. Well, it's the material, but it's also the behavioral change. When I look at this, this innovation here, it's the innovation in material, but also the innovation in the systems. I mean, in the past, uh, the kids have gone to school with a plastic bag of a sandwich and all the little, little uh, fruits and stuff stored in individual bags. But this is uh, an innovation in the, in the consumer in-use experience, correct, as well? It is a complete change, and this is what we see in the industry a lot, that they try to produce attractive products products that are a joy to use. Um, so people will, instead of using one wrap after the other and throwing it away, because one of our main problems is that we produce simply too much waste, um, to reduce waste. And not only for children, but it's uh, children-friendly colors. Even if you go shopping, um, I see more and more people taking along while they go shopping um, something where to put in the cheese or so. I mean, even if you go to the uh, organic supermarket or to the farmer market, what you see is people buying organically produced cheese, but it's wrapped in plastic. <laughs> it's a little bit uh, schizophrenic, yes. Why not take something with you where you can put your uh, groceries in? It actually comes from the past as well, doesn't it? I mean, in, in the past, there was the milk bottle, there was oh, the... Was you would take. Child, that was the way you had your food and the milk. And I like were, that. We, there were specific stores and it was specifically in Germany the duty of children to go there with the milk bottle and get the milk. Yeah, this yeah. was completely... It's a back, bit of back to the past, which is, uh, again, the, 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 in the past there was different ways of what we, what we would call sustainable today, uh, just the ways it used to be done in the past and the, the, through Absolutely. simplification or making things easier, things have got more trashy, a lot more waste. But, uh, now we're back here at an, another sustainable solution, yes? We all know that by now coffee cups are one of the worst source of waste, specifically in big cities, uh, even uh, dangerous for animals. And again, of course, what industry does is they make products that are not only practical, they start to make them beautiful. And one of the interesting things about of this new material is, and I talked to the owner about it, is there are alternatives, for example, using bamboo, but they are always mud. 
they managed to do this material with a Chinese surface, so you have what is a very fashionable thing in the moment to combine mud and shiny tops. Um, but there is another trend we see, and interesting enough, so it's not often used in this context, everything Marie Kondo does about cleaning up your wardrobes, cleaning up uh, your utility rooms, it actually also connects to sustainability. Because what she wants to tell you is, store things in a way that you find it. How often do you buy new batteries because you believe you don't have batteries? And I actually condemned our some of our cupboards with my husband, who was making fun of me. And I said, you know, batteries are in this cupboard and in this room. And we brought them together and we had any kind of battery. And then I suddenly felt guilty and said, actually, I know a drawer where there are more batteries. They are hiding somewhere in the house. And then my husband said, well, actually, there are batteries as well. So in a two-person household, we found batteries in four places. So taking better storage, um, it's also in a very, I get it. Here we go, another example of storage systems from Cozio. Very beautiful way all to keep small things to make children store things. Making better storage and what Marie Conte tries to teach you to do it in a beautiful way. In a way that you don't feel, um, oh I have to do this because I have a guilty conscience, but you have to do it because you enjoy it. But it makes you consume less because you know what you have. You know where things are, there's a bit of a systematic exactly. thinking to it, yes. Exactly. You know where things are and it makes you consume less. And one of the problems also with me was when I started, and I, was, I always regarded myself already as a neat person, but I was a stacker. So what I realized is that I use one third of things and two thirds I completely forgot about. <laughs> so even this is a question of sustainability because also once you declutter and you see how much you throw away it makes you a more conscious buyer. It also makes you more relaxed. I mean there's, yeah. there's a, the, min the minimalists on Netflix as well. It's all about finding things you love, things you need and things that give you happiness and if you, if you look at those three words I just said it, that, that's really what makes you feel calm and more relaxed you, to enjoy life. Absolutely. I see it as completely the same thing as the tiny house movement. Yes. And this is the difference when, when in the 50s and 60s and even sometimes nowadays there's still this advertisement that try, tries to make women feel guilty. They say you have to clean, you have to do this because what would the neighbors think? Is you, are your children healthy if you are a filthy housewife? Marie Kondo is about do you need it? What gives you joy? She is not moralistic at all and that's the, what makes her appealing. That's why it's such a pleasure and so many people around the world are enjoying listening and learning from her. So yeah. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I know you're a busy woman and I hope to see you. We'll see you around soon. I'm sure.